What's up guys, back again with part 3 of my Vagrid Story video strategy guide series. If you guys haven't seen the last two parts, be sure to check out the playlist in the description or the info card in the top corner. As always guys, please hit the like button, subscribe, and please comment to get that YouTube algorithm going so you guys can help me get more content like this to more people. Last time we made our way through the catacombs and defeated the two Lizardman bosses. We learned about the in-game manual and how it covers every aspect of the game. We learned how to deconstruct and craft new weapons. And lastly we learned about what happens to some enemies when we heal them multiple times without attacking them. For part 3 we'll be maneuvering Ashley through the depths of the sanctum. We'll need to fight two bosses to do this, both the golem and the first dragon. Most people struggle with these two bosses because they require a combination of vague tactics that aren't explained just by playing through the game so far. When you beat them and finish the sanctum, you'll have gotten further than the majority of people who play this game. With that out of the way, grab your snacks, brew your coffee, or pop a cold one and let's get stuck in. After the scene, we return to controlling Ashley with another block puzzle in front of us. Kill both bats and break the rightmost push crate. Then push the remaining push crate against the other two push crates. Grab the two carry crates and place them on top of the three push crates. Throw the two carry crates on top of each other and then jump up to the ledge and proceed east out of the room. This room's known as the Corridor of Clerics. There's two skeletons to kill in here. Once you kill them, go east again. Grab any healing items that the skeletons drop and make sure that you're unequipping your weapon so that your risk goes down and your hit points go up again before you proceed to the next room. Kill all the bats in this room and the small table in front of Ashley actually has a heal trap so if you do have wounds after the fight make sure that you do jump up on top of it. Then just put your weapon away and jump to the ledge to the south to proceed out of the room. Jumping from the bookshelf to the ledge of the door can be difficult sometimes, but just keep practicing and eventually you'll get it. This room has a new enemy called the Poison Slime, and it's the first one that we've encountered. They've got a nasty habit of using their poison sneeze, but you can use a piercing weapon to kill them pretty quickly. I get hit by a poison sneeze here from the poison slime, but don't worry, sometimes the poison slimes drop fairy cordals, 
which will heal you of the poison affliction. So it's a win-win. Just a fun fact. For anyone who doesn't know, a chortle is a noisy, gleeful laugh. Here I'm going to use that Grimoire Antidote that we got from beating the Lizardman bosses. We can regenerate MP simply by putting our weapon away, so I tend to use as much magic as I can to heal myself, or to buff myself, or to debuff myself and remove afflictions. That way you can save up your items for when you're in a pinch. Here my first hit misses, so there's no point of doing a chain, so I just let the chain break. Make sure you're using your defensive chains so that you can inflict more damage on the enemy or heal some of your hit points while you're fighting as well. Once we've dispatched all the enemies, jump from the top of one of the bookshelves to the cabinet, and there you'll find a chest. Now just find the door, unlatch it, and proceed to the west. Kill the two skeletons again, and head west to the next room. This room has a locking door trap. There's nothing in this room except for the ghost and the skeleton. You could just attack the ghost if you want, but it does have a water affinity, so you could use fire on it if you wanted to. The other thing this room offers is more chain ability points, so it's always good to kill enemies if you're able to. that done, let's head back out the door. Checking the in-game map gives you a good bearing on where you're at, but for the purposes of this guide, you can also check the map that I've placed on the left-hand side. You'll notice the Ashley marker telling you exactly where you are. So we go south, and in the next room, there's a hellhound and a skeleton for us to kill. Let's proceed south to the next room and make sure that we heal ourselves up and lower our wrist to zero before we do. <sighs> this
this room is business as usual. Kill the bat and the poison slime, and then prepare to fight the first boss of the sanctum, the golem, which is to the east. And here we're going to use this uh, moment to get our heart pounding, get the blood pumping, and uh, amp ourselves up to kick the golem's butt. When you're done that, head on in. is a purely physical enemy. We're going to switch over and equip the pink squirrel which is a blunt weapon which the golem is weak against. One strategy when you fight the golem is to use the defensive chain to reflect damage back. It reflects 40% of the damage dealt to you back to the golem. Immediately weaken the golem by casting Degenerate on it. Here I use the Reflect Damage defensive ability chain. Cut in close and get behind the golem as much as you can. This takes you out of the golem's attack range and confuses it. Attack the golem's body from behind and chain as many attacks together as you can. Here I almost kill him just by chaining it. Now with just one 8 hit chain, I take over half of the golem's hit points away. My next chain misses, so I end the chain immediately and try again. Stay on your toes, and when the golem does attack you, make sure that you're getting your reflect damage chain attack in on him. There are some people out there that are able to kill this golem just with one chain. But you can see here with the second chain I'm able to kill the golem outright. So it's actually not that difficult to beat this guy. Just a lot of people get stuck with some of the tactics. Without switching to a blunt weapon or using degenerate this fight becomes much harder. Killing the golem boss, we get a grimoire that allows us to cast the spell Prostasia, which increases our armor's defensive stats. Here I'm able to acquire the chain ability Raging Ache. It inflicts the amount of additional damage equal to 10% of the damage that Ashley has sustained. Raging Ache is the most important chain in the game. Because of that 10% of the damage that Ashley has sustained, if you're below full health, Raging Ache gets better. So if you're losing a fight, Raging Ache will help you win. Say you have a max of 250 hit points and you're down to 80, that means Raging Ache will initially carry an extra 17 hit points of damage, which is 10% of 170, on its opening blow. 
and will just keep growing from there. Even if the chance to hit and hurt with the first blow said zero, Raging Ache would do that base zero plus the 17 hit points of damage when you chain it successfully. And it just keeps climbing from there. Head all the way back to the Corridor of Clerics too after you have healed yourself up. And this time head north. Make sure you equip the Soul Kiss again, or the enemies on the way back to the Corridor of Clerics are going to be a much more formidable foe for you to beat. For the boss fight ahead, we're going to be fighting a dragon, so I'm going to equip my shield with the Dragonite Gem. This will increase my power against the dragon. <laughs> Let's learn the Prostasia skill from the Guamoir that we got from the Golem boss. That'll help us increase our defense against the enemies ahead. my chain abilities and add the raging ache to my repertoire. equipment and I'm going to equip anything that gives me the piercing type since the dragon boss ahead is weak to the piercing type. In this room there's a bat and a lizard man. Just kill them and then proceed to the east. If you want to build your weapon damage against the next dragon boss, you can fight these lizard men multiple times to increase your dragon stat. Save and reload, or go fight other enemies and return to the areas that have lizard men after a while and they should have respawned. I'm not going to do it because I want to showcase the Raging Ache chain ability during that dragon boss fight. This room has a bat and a poison slime. Kill the bat and wait for the slime to come down and then attack it. Destroy the middle push crate and then pick up the carry crate and place it onto the other push crate. Jump up on top and then jump over across to the ledge. Get on the cloud stone and go across and attack the lizard man. Once that's done, leave to the west. Yeah. 
now we're going to talk about elixirs. We've been getting them from drops from enemies as well as chests. They permanently increase your stats. The stat increases are random between 1 and 4. So make sure you save before you use an elixir. That way if you don't get a good high number to increase your stats, you can just reload the game and try again. Congratulations, you've made it to the dreaded dragon boss. You could equip the Braveheart gem to your soul kiss weapon, that way you'll have a better accuracy when fighting the dragon. As soon as you gain control of Ashley, run as close to its chest underneath its head as you can. When you're far away, the dragon can use its thermal breath attack, which can hit you for a lot of damage. Also, you can use the Prostasia skill, which will help boost your defense. Don't bother using the Degenerate skill because the dragon is immune to it. So just stay where you're at, close to its chest, and attack its head over and over. <laughs> Just focus on chaining the dragon as much as you can and be aware of its attack. It'll do a tail swing. Either reflect the attack or absorb the hit points back from the damage. See here I missed the chain attack, but with the raging ache it still hits for the damage that the dragon's already dealt to me. So here's a perfect example of where the raging ache really comes in handy. Even though my risk is at 100 and my accuracy is super low because of it, the raging ache still allows me to hit the dragon for quite a bit of damage. Proceed to the north and through the door, and you're finally on your way to Liamond. That's it for part 3 of this video strategy guide series. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so we can boost the algorithm to get more Vagrant Story content to more people. I'm off to work on part 4, the Town Center West, so until next time, stay solid.